Welcome to our lecture online. So here's our third example of maximum or minimum values using a parabola or using a quadratic equation. And in this case, they're not giving us the equation. We're supposed to come up with the equation ourselves. What we have here is we have a building and we're trying to fence in an area next to the building. And we have 124 meters of fencing and we want to try to arrange the size of that in such a way that we have the maximum area enclosed. So what we have here is we have that the area is going to equal the length times the width. And we want that to be a maximum. But notice we have two variables, length and width, and we don't know what they're going to be. So we have to find a relationship between the length and the width. But since we have a total amount of fencing of 124 meters, since this is also, of course, the width, we know that twice the width plus one time the length is equal to 124, which means we can represent one in terms of the other. So what we can say is that the length is, the length is equal to 124 minus twice the width. And we can take that and substitute that into our equation right here. So when we do that, we get the area is equal to the length, which is 124, minus twice the width, and then we multiply that times the width. So in other words, the area is equal to minus 2 times the width squared, plus 124 times the width. And notice that looks a lot like an equation where we have y as a function of x. Instead of y, we have a, and instead of x, we have the width. So, what should the width be so we have the maximum area? Well, we can do that by finding the vertex. Now notice that a is equal to negative 2, b is equal to 124, and c is equal to 0. So, instead of finding the x coordinate of the vertex, we're going to find the w coordinate of the vertex. So, w sub v is equal to minus b over 2a. That's equal to minus b, b is 124. And 2a, 2 times a, a is equal to negative 2. So it would be equal to minus 124 divided by negative 4. Half of that is 62. Half of that would be 31. So 31 times 4 is 124. So they want the width to be 31. And they want the length to be, well, the length, the length is equal to 124 minus 2 times the width, which is 31. That would be 124 minus 62, which is equal to 62. So they want the width to be equal to 31 meters, and they want the length to be equal to 62 meters. What will the graph look like when we graph that? Well, let's give that a try. So in the vertical axis, we're going to have area that's going to be in meters squared. And on the horizontal axis, we're going to let that equal x, or the width, I guess the width which is going to be in meters. And notice when the width is 31 meters, that would be, let's say, right over here, 31, then what would be the area? Well, then we can go ahead and plug that back into our equation. So we know that area is equal to uh, minus 2 times the width. The width would be 31 squared plus 124 times 31. I think for that, I'll grab my calculator. So what do we have here? We have 124 times 31 minus 31 squared times 2 equals 1922. So A equals 1922 meters squared. I can also check that out if I multiply that out and I get the same answer. So let's try that. 62 times 31. Yes, 1922, so that is correct. And so, area, 1922, so this would be where the vertex is. Now, does that parabola open upward or downward? When we look at the equation, notice the square term is negative, which means the parabola opens downward, which means we're going to have a maximum value. Also, when, the, when w is 0, area is 0, which is right at the origin, so we know that the parabola also passes through the origin which means that the graph will look like this. And notice that's the highest point, that's the largest area when the width is 31. If the width is less or more, you'll have less area enclosed. That's the maximum value gained 
or are obtained when the width is equal to 31 meters. And that is how it's done. That's your typical calculus hmm. one. Typical, that's your typical calculus max min problem, but as you can see, if you have a quadratic equation in one variable, you don't need calculus to solve it. You can solve it just using algebra. Take the derivative, set equal to zero, and that also gives you the right answer, yeah.